Welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast. You're in the right place if you're a growth-seeking being who acknowledges the challenges and delights of your humanity on the path to an ever more conscious life. If you want to feel inspired to love and accept yourself, to feel free to be and express you in all your brilliance, if you want to truly value yourself and others and feel energized and alive both at home and in the world, then sit back and take a breath as you explore and grow the brilliance of your beautiful human self with your host, the father of non-personal awareness and creator of the MPA process, Joel Young. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast with me, Joel Young. I'm delighted you're here. If you're brand new to this podcast, welcome. You're actually going to find us on a day where I'm going to change things up a bit, which I'll explain in a moment. Uh, And if you're back, thanks for being here so much. I'm going to be asking for some feedback from you, especially at the end. Um, So I look forward to to doing that because today is, is kind of a... It's, well, to put it in a really blunt way, I'm pulling my trousers down. (laughs) That's what I'm doing today. It's kind of, I'm going to be confessing to you, I'm going to be living my commitment to myself on this. Uh, And I guess the the different, I'll I'll give you the backstory of where this came from as well and what, you know, why I'm doing this and and how things have been and, and why I'm choosing to do things differently today. So how is it different? It may not be obvious to you, but um, I'm really, I'm completely unscripted today. So back in October, this is what, eight months ago, I started this podcast um, inspired by a guy called James Lavers. Um, he's my go-to guy for sort of, I guess, marketing content, stuff like that. And um, I did a one day course with him, um, which was about starting a podcast. It's something that I wanted to do for a very long time. Um, And I often say to James, you know, he he kicks my ass in just the right way. (laughs) And so the Be A Brilliant Human podcast was born back at the beginning of October, say eight months ago now. And and I've loved doing it. And don't worry, I'm not going to say this is the end of it, not by a long chalk. Um, but I, I've loved doing it. And the very first episode, if you go back and this is the very first episode, I described it as my commitment to imperfection, um, which is an interesting thing because in a way, this is what spurred me on today. And I've loved doing the podcast and I think it's everything that I've done so far, I've, I stand behind and I think it's it's great. But one of the things that I have found over the time is that Um, As I've got into it, I've tended to get a bit more, I would say, controlled around it, a bit more um, needing to sort of script it out more. Um, The thing about that is it takes a lot of time. And I want this podcast to be sustainable, full of energy and all the rest of it. But I was finding in my own in my own life and in the structure of my week, it was starting to take up a lot of time, the preparation, those kind of things. And I just started a new course with, well, there's two things. Let me let me start off at the beginning. So one of the things that I'm doing here today by not having a script is in a way dropping a mask, which I wasn't aware that I was doing, but it sort of come to my attention that I was. And there's two things that sort of sponsored this. I, I watched a, a live video of James a couple of weeks ago, and it was about masks. And he does a lot of work with um, video work, helping people to do, be great on video, but it also applies to podcasts and other things. And he was talking about how sometimes we don't realize it, but we put on a mask because we have some kind of fear around a self-perception. And these things can be subtle. And even if, just like myself, of course, I'm already enlightened and all that stuff. <laughs> no imperfections here no no of course not um but it's it's one of those things where you know you can you can come across it so I started looking at you know what what are the masks that are going on anyway I I sort of identified some in my own way but none of them seem to sort of gel and you know I'm a great believer in investing in some kind of coaching and James launched a course which I started yesterday uh, which I invested in, um, again, which is to to help in terms of business marketing, you know, visibility, putting stuff out there, that kind of thing. And yesterday, you know, he said, well, you know, bring what what's some of the pressing questions. And the, one of the pressing questions for me is how do I get down the time it takes 
for me to do the podcast because I love doing it. I want to do it. Um, but I am finding that it starts to sort of seep into the the rest of the week. And I've got loads of other things that I want to do in conjunction with and as as well as the podcast. So we got into a discussion about, you know, what I do, how much time I spend doing the graphics, the preparation. And he was like, hmm, why are you doing so much preparation? And this is where I started to sort of unpack what the the, the fear and therefore the, the, the mask was. And I said to him, well, my, my fear is that if I don't go with some kind of script, then I'm going to be incoherent. He was like, well, what do you what do you mean by that? And he said, well, I said, it's well, it's, it's really that sometimes my my mind, this is why it takes me a long time to write things, because my mind, I've got a creator's mind. I'm, I'm a musician at heart, you know, um, and so a thousand ideas come at once. And I said to him, well, I found that when I when I go unscripted on things, then it, I'm, I'm kind of afraid that it will be incoherent. And he said, well, so, so what? And I said, well, that means my fear was that, you know, I'll lose my audience. It won't make sense. It will be a bit crap and people will turn off and, you know, they won't come and visit my website and all the things that I'd love them to do on the back of the podcast. Um, and he was like, well, okay, I don't think that's really what, you know, what the what the fear is or what it is that's going on. He said, well, you know, he said, have you ever done have you ever done any sort of stuff before where you go unscripted like Facebook lives? And I said, well, yeah, I've done some Facebook lives. And he said, well, how did it go? And I said, well, I listened back to them and I thought they were incoherent. And that's probably where it comes from. And he said, yeah, but, but did people like them? Did they respond? And I was like, uh, yeah, <laughs> they did. Actually, it was actually fine. It was like one of those, oh, no, aha moment. And he said, Joe, I think you're putting on like a, a sort of a competency mark or mask or a, a perfection mask. And he said, what would happen if you just, you know, just drop that mask? You know, admit to your audience, which is what I'm doing today. Admit to them, you know, <laughs> what you've been doing and try and go without it. And he said, embrace your wild side. He said, look, you know, you're, you know, a, someone who comes from a rock musician background. Uh, in the time we, I've had done various courses with him and, and sort of, know him quite well so he knows of me and he says look you've got that wildness in you he said what if you took that flaw and embraced it and that was actually what his previous video that I'd seen about the mask was about he was talking about how we have this self-perceived flaw and then we attempt to compensate for it whereas actually if you embrace the flaw it's kind of your biggest genius and what I'll do, actually, I'll link to that video in the show notes. That's a Facebook Live video that he did a couple of weeks back. But I'll link, if you're interested in that, it's a great video. If you, if you do any kind of content creation, or, and it's also, I think, a really great sort of lesson in life. But uh, So I'll link to that in the show notes. But he basically said, embrace this flaw, Joel. Embrace that that wildness in you. And it was like, I, I don't know, something in me just went, oh, my God, that feels so good. <laughs> it feels so good to me. And um, and it's interesting because it it reminded me of um, of a time um, in a previous relationship. This is quite a few years ago now, and it was quite a long term relationship. And and after several years, it started to get very stale. It was, I guess, what I describe these days as, as a. It became a very dry relationship. Um, and and I was sort of talking with my partner at the time and, and saying we need to sort of maybe get some help, look at this, and, and go with what's on. Now she, by her nature, and there's nothing wrong with her nature being this way, was was very kind of rigid and rulesy, I guess, and like things to be everything in a certain way. And there's a part of me, no doubt, that likes the order and the structure. I can be very organized. I can be very, um, you know, if I'm doing a project, I'll make lists and I will, you know, sort things out. I, I love a certain amount of order. But we went to this this therapy, which um, I can't remember for the life of me what it was called. Um, but I think the process was called crossing the bridge. And you sit knee to knee and uh, and then you kind of invite someone to come into your world inside of you and find your sort of core in a garden, I guess, that was the way that the facilitator called it. And the idea is it's an empathy um, because I was finding I, I wasn't feeling understood, I guess, and I guess she wasn't too. Um, but it's an empathy process. So you take step by step, you come inside 
Um, you invite the person in and then you sort of say what's going on. And the job of the other person is is to really get you and really and so that you feel like they get you right down to the core level, sort of layer by layer, really. So we did it. Um, she began and I was empathizing and I was able to go right to the heart and she felt very empathized with. I'm not blowing my own trumpet here, just there's a point to be made. But when we reversed it, um, she found it difficult to um, to find sort of the empathy. But when I got to my core self, the way that I described it was like that there was that balance. There was there was like the the structure of it, but there was always also what I called like there's a mad professor in there as well. <laughs> and I really got it that I needed that sense of honoring that that chaos. There is chaos on a chaos in me, my friend. <laughs> And this is what this this whole thing speaks to, and um, and interestingly, I, I think that was something that she that, that I don't know that frightened her or or she just didn't get it. it, it it's like, but I realised in that moment we ended up splitting up, and then I realised in that moment that I need space for that, and I need someone who can um, can see that and and honour that in me. And then, of course, when it comes to to this podcast. Um, it was that, oh my God, I recognize how what I've done with the podcast, and I think I've done it on so several projects, I, I can get into that space where that, um, you know, and she was a, a really good mirror for me in this regard, where I can have my ordered self become the jailer of the chaos self. And what happens in that is that the inspiration starts to drop, the creativity starts to drop, and things become hard work. So that's why I'm I'm really sort of committing here to going, okay, I need to start doing this podcast in a different way and let that chaos um, come out. Um, so I'm committed today, and I am today off script. I'm, I'm going to just go with the flow. One thing that James said, actually, which I loved, he said, the good thing about this is you could go anywhere. <laughs> you could click the mic on. You've got a general topic, maybe a couple of bullet points, and then you could go anywhere because that's, you know, embrace your lateral mind. Um, which is what I'm doing today in this free flow. I don't know as we go forward um, if they're going to be shorter podcasts. I might I might witter on for ages, um, but I'm just clicking the microphone on and and going for it. So I want to sort of talk a bit about how some of the questions that he asked on that video. Okay, I'm going to post that video um, because I think they're really useful for you know if if you have anywhere in life where you feel like um, you're efforting to do something then there's a chance that you're wearing a mask or if you're somebody who puts out video or um or does any kind of content then it there may be a mask there that's not letting you shine your full brilliant human self and this is definitely a brilliant human moment for me really of, of this realization um so um the, some of the questions that that he asked so i haven't got them in front of me but i'm going to sort of <laughs> so james if you're listening I have posted the video. It's okay. They can go to source and get the real questions. But if I remember correctly, the, the real question kind of was, you know, what, how, well, how do you want to be perceived by a certain output? And again, this can be on social media posts or videos, but also this can be in terms of if, you, if you're if you talking with somebody, whether you're with work people or, um, you know, or any kind of um, presentation or any kind of conversation, really, it's a good question. It's like, ask, how would you like to be perceived? What do you want this communication to do? Um, and then, then you need to ask yourself, what am I afraid of? This is the key, really. What what is my fear about you know that about what might happen or what might be thought, um, and also what am I hiding? <laughs> that was the big one. What am I hiding? Oh no, I, I was hiding the the fear that I might be completely incoherent, um, <laughs> and and then you've got to come into you know what is your self perception here? And this is one of the really key things. It is about your self perception. So going back to my example. Um, I had this perception that I'd be incoherent, I'd lose people. And that that might be true. It might be a bit more chaotic sometimes and a bit clearer at other times. Um, but when he asked that checking question of, you know, have you done it before and how did it go? And I said, well, I judged it, of course, because I have my own projections on it. Um, but when I really, really thought about it, um, I'd had positive feedback for those videos. So clearly, you know, it wasn't it wasn't the case. So I busted my own myth. So if you're asking yourself, you know, what's your own self-perception about it? Um, 
you know, then you get a chance to unpick what that fear is and discover um, what the mask is, you know, what you're scared will happen. And then I know I found for me that, um, see, my my first thing was the coherence thing, but but really underneath that, it was it was a little bit deeper. It was more that fear that I would just go off the rails, dry up and those kind of things. And ultimately, they're also very, um, you know, this this podcast, you know, it's it's part of my business. I love it. I love doing it. I love doing all my business. Um, but it is about, you know, getting the word out about what I do, the services I offer, those kind of things. So another part of the real fear is if it doesn't work, then I'm spending all this time and then there's no return in terms of success for the business that comes from this output. You know, all of my output feeds back into the things that I offer so I can serve you in a paid way as well as a, a free way. So um, so that was that was part of the fear. So you might find if you, if you do this this sort of approach if you start looking at your mask that that the thing you first tell yourself about what you're afraid of isn't actually really what's going on and one thing I love about how James does things he he, he really sort of crunches it down to to take away the fluff and and get down to just real simple language I know there's times that uh, I remembered working in a in a company once uh, and they were a spiritual company I shall not name their names and I was helping them with some abundant stuff, and uh, <laughs> this story just come to me. It makes me laugh. So they were all in this room, and I had a big flip chart up, and we were going through, and I was really getting them to, to find out what they wanted. They were trying to fill seminars and were, were feeling like they weren't getting the numbers that they wanted. So I was asking them, you know, why do you want to, to fill the seminars? And And so we got all those, you know, those virtue signals uh, that sort of saying, well, you know, to be of service to people and to change lives. And it was all kind of feeling a bit like, hmm, a flat, really. And um, so I called the banner and said, look, come on, you know, I'm not feeling this. What's the real reason you want more people in your seminars that's going to float your boat, all these employees of this company? And someone finally shyly said, well, we would make more money. <laughs> And suddenly the room lit up. It's like all it's, and it doesn't negate the service and everything else. One of the interesting things about businesses in the sort of personal development um, and sort of spiritual realm, it didn't negate all those things. But the fact was they were just sort of working their asses off without a return. And the thought of actually having some financial returns, they could pay their bills and feel abundant and all those things lit them up so they're often you're presenting ideas especially if you've got those sort of inner sense of well uh, in in like me in, in in this industry you know or you have those kind of um self image based positive self image virtue signal kind of ideas you might find that it comes down to the down and dirty which is you know i, I and for me my admission in this is like part of the underlying thing was that if i if I did a crap job, as, as was my self perception, people would turn off, and then it would be pointless. I'd waste my time, and there'd be no return, and it would all just be horrible. <laughs> and who knows? Maybe you've turned off already. I don't know, but I feel great. Um, <laughs> I say I was, I was actually, uh, here we're dancing around now, but I was, um, I was quite terrified. I mean, that that's not an underestimation um, of of how I felt. I committed to to James yesterday. I said, right, I'm going to do it tomorrow. That will be my my task. Um, and he said, well, I'll promise someone that really matters to you. So um, he said, who's who's someone that you uh, wouldn't break a promise to? Tell them. So I told Karen, my my beloved partner. Uh, yes, I said, I've got to make you a promise. And she's like, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do this podcast tomorrow. I'm going to do the next two without notes and just, just commit to that. She said, okay. Um, so I lost, yeah, I lost my train of thought. There you go. That's it. Lost my train of thought. Yeah, so yeah, I was terrified. That's the word I was saying. Um, and that, that's interesting to me because um, <laughs> I'm laughing at myself here. I found it, admissions are really good. I remember back in, um, I think it was the beginning of last year, beginning of 2019, and I, I flew over to San Diego. I was keynoting a, um, an event over there and for lots of peers. This is part of the Evolutionary Business Council, and I'm on the, the Wisdom Council. I was on the board for about seven years, and I'm, I'm on the... Uh, the board is like the, the parliament if you're in the UK and the, the wisdom council is like the house of lords <laughs> once you've done your time in the in in the board you go to the wisdom council uh, so I'm part of that but 
we had our annual conference and I was keynoting it. So, um, but the thing is I hadn't done um, kind of live work and certainly not to, to that size of audience, um, not for a long time. Plus they were all my peers. So it wasn't like I was speaking to people that, you know, were, were sort of not, that, that these people were all basically professional speakers. <laughs> And uh, and I found there, this is where admission is so brilliant. Um, and as I was getting on stage, well, my, my brain was going like, oh, I'm so scared. And, and I thought, why am I being so silly? I, I love, once I'm on stage, just like, yeah, once I'm on the microphone's on, I'm fine. So the first thing I did when I got up there, I just said, uh, I, you know, I literally, um, <laughs> she said, I'm fucking cacking myself. And they laughed. And I said, it's funny because you're mostly American and you don't understand what cacking means, but take my word for it. But once I'd said it, once I'd just got it out of my system, you know, I knocked it out of the park. It was a fantastic talk and everybody got loads of great feedback for it and let things flow. So in a sense, I guess this morning when I was like going, OK, um, I'm feeling terrified. I thought, well, you know, that's part of it. What I'm going to be doing is is admitting it to you anyway. Um, but here's an interesting thing, because I thought to myself, well, you know, going forward in terms of preparation, what I've been doing basically is thinking of the idea, going through it, scripting it out, a bit of research at times, and making sure it's in an ordered, sensible way, uh, and then sort of giving it to you. And I thought, well, it's not that preparation is by itself, a, you know, a bad thing. In fact, it can be a good thing to get, in one sense, your thoughts in order to some degree. But also it sort of dropped into me that you know what the best preparation is to actually follow my own advice. <laughs> now, just so you know, I, I use MPA a lot before. So normally before I, I give you the script and I and I deliver to you, I'll do an MPA. I thought to myself, right, so I'm currently in a, what I would call a sucky situation. So back, um, I'm going to have to guess which episode it is. I'll find it for you in, in a moment. But there was an episode where I talked about the unconditional pivot and um, actually what I'm going to do live here while I'm talking I'm going to open my my anchor app which is my podcast is and find the number because I didn't write it down okay so it's episode um, 31 oh no it's 31st of March what episode number is that let's find it out it is isn't this typical look at this oh episode 27 there you go see now you know it's live <laughs> Episode 27, I I did a mini training um, on the unconditional pivot. That's for taking a sucky situation and pivoting it around to a positive state. So I was in a state of, you know, fear, terror, going, oh, my God, and, and slight prevarication. So I thought the best preparation actually is to, is to do that exercise and some MPA so I can shift my state. So I literally sat down with a pad. I did it on, a, on paper this time wrote down the sucky situation. Oh, I'm afraid it's going to be rubbish. Da, 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 and, you know, and I'm all fearful. Um, and then went through the process, which is where you, you switch it around. If the conditions were different, how would you, you know, how would you feel? Wrote down the list of feelings, took them through the steps that follow. And, and I'll link to episode 27 so that you can uh, download, because you can download that exercise. It's brilliant. Um, which completely shifted my state. And what some of my keywords was that, um, you know, if things were different, I would feel energized, I'd feel joy, I'd feel um, ready, I'd feel in discovery mode. And that was an important one for me because that's something that I really believe in is, is coming to things in discovery mode. Um, so I went through that process and shifted my state and then I took some of those particularly um, strong ones which is again in episode 27 I talk about how you can use the exercise with MPA as well um, and I did some MPA and it and again it completely shifted my state so that I was coming to this microphone switching it on uh, with a sense of that sort of flow excited discovery mode state um, already in place and I noticed by my own judgment as I talk through this so far, it's sounding okay. I don't feel like I've lost my train. Yeah, maybe I didn't have the number of the <laughs> number of the episode, but that's all cool. Everything's still flowing. Um, so that's something that the preparation time for this podcast today has been such a fraction of the time that it took me before. So I'm in a win, which is always a good thing. 
And uh, the other thing that comes to mind, um, and this was raised uh, yesterday when I was in, in this course with, with James about this kind of experience, is it occurred to me that, um, well, th there were some examples, or there's some examples I've come across where people talk about being feeling drained with one-to-one -one work. Now, that isn't my experience. I absolutely fucking love one-to-one -one work. And we talked about that, and... And he said, well, why is that? I said, well, well, there's no preparation. <laughs> Maybe I'm just lazy. And I said, well, in it, I'm just completely in the moment, in that discovery mode, which was what brought that um, example to mind, and really just flowing with where it is. And I talk a lot about having no agenda when it comes to facilitating clients. And that gives you that sense of not being able to, uh, of not meeting any resistance in a client, which which is often what creates that sort of, if, if you're a therapist of any kind and you're meeting some kind of um, having resistant clients, um, then the chances are you've got an agenda and that's going to suck your energy and make it hard work, just like what's happening with me with this podcast, right? Um, so, and again, he said to me, that's, that that proves that's your zone of genius. So again, applying that to to how you go about the um, doing the podcast is one thing. And the interesting thing that came to me about that when I was doing the pivoting exercise, and actually it more came in the MPA, was how that relates to this. Because one of the things that I really want from this podcast is to reach through the microphone and connect with you. I want to, you to feel like I'm really there. And, you know, a point that James made is that masks can work. And, and I'm sure, I hope that you felt connected with, even though I'd been scripting it, because you kind of can't hide your your heartful intentions, really. But there's no doubt that that I thought to myself, what is it in with a client that allows me to, to trust that there'll be a flow, to trust that there'll be a divine order to it, to trust that thing, that it will, it will find the perfect shape that it needs to be in response to whatever's going on for them. And my, my story, in a sense, was that, that that's interactional. Um, that's something where I get feedback from them, <laughs> which then sparks me into the next wave. And it occurred to me as I went through the pivot exercise and then the MPA that I did, that actually um, part of my story was that by just speaking to a, to a mic here, I haven't got any sort of verbal or actual feedback. But the truth is that that if I drop that and just say, well, I do have that capacity, and th actually by not having that script in the way, that mask, and this is what it feels like for me right now, it's reaching through. So, you know, even though there are, you know, hundreds and hundreds of you out there, um, you know, individually, somehow on an energetic level, it frees me to feel like I'm connecting to you. And that gives me what I need to allow the the inspiration, the flow, and the right next thought to come through me. And I certainly hope that's coming across. And please, let's be asking you to feedback. If you're brand new to, to me, you're probably like, well, this is just well, this is how it is. It's the first time I've listened. But if you've listened before, you know, let me know if, if you notice that, if it makes and I and I'm really open to honest, genuine feedback from you. You know, does it does it feel like you recognize that that shift today? Um, you know, just I, I'm really open to you sort of and have you found this coherent today? And I'm not just looking, I mean, great. If, if you go, yes, brilliant, Joe, I love it, brilliant. But I'm not looking for you to sort of blow smoke up my ass either. I'm genuinely interested in 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 your feedback. And I do feel today as I, okay, I'm just in this discovery mode, in this moment, reaching through the microphone, I feel that much stronger. And it, it does delight me. So really, really in a win-win. All right. So um, I don't know how long I'm going to go on these ones either. <laughs> it could be the full half an hour. I don't even know I said that already. See, that, that's one thing that I do. I have a confession time here. If sometimes I say things, if I'm in a flow or something, I think, have I said that? I don't know, because my mind's all, <laughs> it's got a thousand watts running through it as I go through it. All right. So um, so in a way, it's about getting into your zone of genius. Um, my, I guess how I want, mostly today in one sense, has come from a place of just um, having giving myself the gift of my own better experience of doing the podcast. Um, but also really I always one of my intentions, I know that when you set an intention, a real true heartfelt intention, um, you know, it tends to come through if you let go, which is what I'm doing today. And one of my intentions is, is to, uh, you know, even if I talk about me, 
I really want it to have value for you and actionable stuff for you. Hence, I'm going to put James's video in there and hopefully I've given you a sense of the questions you can ask yourself because um, the idea of, of looking at your mask, which hides a flaw, a self-perceived flaw, not necessarily a real flaw, and then taking that flaw and, you know, wearing it as, you know, front and center and embracing it not as so much as a flaw but as something which is a real gift of you and your personality and what you're about so my mad chaotic mind um <laughs> you know that that i get or realize i've i get afraid of in terms of how my communication comes across um is actually is actually part of what gives me my creativity it's like if I think back to to how MPA came along and, you know, it just sort of popped out of me. It wasn't something that I planned or, or um, you know, or, or went through line by line, what should they say next? It just was a creative moment where I got out of the way. And um, but I do have that the ordered part of me, which is the other side of me, was great for um, in terms of putting things into structure. So if I'm building web pages or if I'm um, laying out a certain marketing plan or if I'm you know if, if I'm right I mean when I'm designing courses there is a need to, to, to get a certain amount of um, of order and structure because it's it's a step-by-step -step learning process um, but I do know that when I do my when I do my courses I don't script out the videos for the courses I use a mind map which is basically <laughs> Okay, well, what just happened there? <laughs> this is quite. This is a lesson learned live. So I carried on talking, but I've just discovered that because normally, if I'm scripting it, I'll be recording in chunks, and then you have the, um, you know, the little musical phrase to break it up. Um, but turns out that this, the way that that I work with with Anchor, it goes into Anchor Podcasts. Um, records directly into it, but they have a maximum of thirty minutes. <laughs> so at some point, and it's and it's out of my sight because I, I face opposite direction when I'm recording. So I turn around and thought, why isn't it recording anymore? <laughs> so I don't know how long I went on for, but anyway, I'm going to wrap this up today. I've, whatever I said was never meant to be heard by your ears. <laughs> so let's wrap it up. I I really hope. I think I've just been saying. I don't know why where it cut me off. Um, I'll have to do a little edit just to, if it's halfway through a word, hope it makes sense. But basically, um, yeah, I, I really hope that, that today you've enjoyed it. I think I was just probably talking about, um, or I certainly have talked about the, um, you know, let me know, just, just let me know, get in touch with me in some way. Um, you can connect on social media, uh, at Joel Young MPA on Instagram, Twitter, etc. uh, slash Joel Young on YouTube, uh, MPA rocks on Facebook, uh, you can email me. Now, <clears throat> today I've mentioned MPA. I've mentioned the Unconditional Pivot Exercise. So if you go to the show notes for episode 27, which is www.beabrillianthuman.com slash 27, then you can listen to uh, the whole episode, the whole mini training on the Unconditional Pivot Exercise and download the worksheet that goes with it. I'll also put the worksheet in this week's um in this week's episode notes, which will be www.beabrillianthuman.com slash 32. And, um, and also I'll put a link to, because you can download the MPA process for free. Um, and those things work great together. And MPA is just fantastic. So if you haven't already downloaded that, do go ahead and do that. Um, and you can contact me by email. You can hit the voice message on, um, uh, on, on the website. And um, and just leave a message for me. I'd love you to do that, actually. Just, just I'd love to have your voice. I can actually, what I can do with that is if you do record something, I can bring it into the podcast and then have that sort of responding situation uh, happening, which I'd love to have. So I, I think we're there, folks. <laughs> Turns out I didn't run out of words 10 minutes in. <laughs> I probably went on for an extra 20 minutes after that, but... Uh, We'll get to chat next week. I'm looking forward to seeing, um, to staying in discovery mode, seeing what comes out, um, hoping this continues to be of great value to you and that you feel even more connected to me as I feel more connected to you. Big hugs, great love to all of you, and I will see you next time. All that remains is to cue the moo. Mm -hmm.